Auto iliac diseases part 3. In occlusion, the key thing is learning to cross these lesions. So how would we do it? You can either go from an anti-grade approach or from a retrograde approach. So you'll have a wire like a Simmons wire across the bifurcation or oh, I mean, or you may have just the tip of the catheter at the occlusion and you would use a wire like the angle thermo wire to cross the lesion and once you have crossed it, you'll take your catheter across change that for an extra stiff wire then have your crossover sheet or your guiding catheter across pre-dilate the lesion and come off if it's adequate. Now most often this is never adequate and today we believe that for occlusions one can as well do a primary stenting and not a bailout stenting when the results are poor. Now sometimes like you said we may have a sub intimal flap which is flow limiting where you would use a stent as a bailout procedure to ensure that the vessel doesn't occlude again in the next few minutes or hours. So this is an example of a chronic occlusion of the common iliac artery on the left side and this is the end result after angioplasty and stenting. You could do the same procedure by going through the retrograde route or you could sometimes convert an anti-grade into a retrograde procedure by snaring the catheter and pulling it out. So that would mean that you have pulled it, taken the catheter from the retrograde route and now placed the wire into the outer and you're ready to do the procedure like you went retrograde. Now this is useful especially when you want to ensure that your uh, stent is kept at a position just across the ostium or when you have to do bilateral stenting in a patient with bilateral disease. Here are some examples again of chronic occlusions of the iliac artery treated by plain balloon angioplasty and like I said the, these are things we should do several years before today we would treat them all by primary stent and here is examples where we have stented chronic occlusions. Another example of a chronic iliac occlusion treated by stenting. Another example where we actually do the bilateral stenting for a critical stenosis of the ostium on the left side and total occlusion of the common iliac artery on the right side. Now if you look at the patency rates again, if the lesions are category 1, category 2 and category 3, patency rates are close to 75 to 80 percent at the end of 5 years. And uh, thus I believe uh, that it is the way to go about or it should be the first line of treatment for unilateral auto iliac lesions in category 3 lesions and of course for category 1 and category 2 it is the treatment of choice. Now the blue shows some long lesions and uh, if you look at it you realize even in these lesions more than 5 centimeters the results are acceptable when you think surgery for some reason is not possible or not practical. Do we have any role for stent drafts in chronic occlusions? I still do not know. We do not use the common um, stent drafts for occlusions because one of the reasons is that if the lesion is a little long, we can end up losing the internal iliac artery. If you have to use uh, stent drafts on two sides and if there is such overlap, we tend to produce a stenosis on the opposite side. So we would reserve it only for aneurysms. A few words on the external iliac artery. Remember this is a dangerous zone. The vessel is prone to rupture. Also remember that if you plan to use a stent, it has to be a dedicated stent which have proved 
that the fracture rates are low and never never use a balloon expandable stent because when the patient flexes the stent will completely get crushed. So an example of an external iliac occlusion just at the point where it becomes the common femoral artery and this is the end result of plain balloon angioplasty which like I said is the best way to treat a lesion across a joint. And another example of a chronic occlusion of the external iliac artery the quality of the image looks poor because it's a CO2 angiogram and this is the end result after we actually place a wall stent across the occluded segment. What are the complications? Rupture, so remember if the patient complains of excruciating pain ensure that you have not ruptured the vessel. Dissections can happen you can have an instant thrombosis which today is much less after we routinely prime a patient with clopidogrel for at least three days then the chance of distal emboli is a reality and which may have to be treated by either an aspiration device or thrombolytic therapy and then you may have instant stenosis when the patient comes for the first follow-up in the next couple of months here is a patient with a chronic occlusion of the external iliac artery. You can see the grossly dilated internal iliac artery. Maybe we should have realized it's a dangerous lesion to treat. And you can see what happened at the end of the procedure, the rupture that has taken place from the proximal external iliac artery. We left the balloon inflated. That is the only thing we had. Can you see the huge shift in the bladder? The patient was sent for surgery, the surgeon just ligated the vessel and the patient's limb was saved and of course the life also. Here is a patient where we had a chronic occlusion of the left common iliac artery with a stenosis on the right. We did an angioplasty and stenting and both the vessels immediately closed down because of thrombosis. As you look you can see that these are very old slides. It gives us a very good idea that these things are more common in the past. Today we don't see much of this because of clopidogrel and aspirin. And in this patient, we put a pigtail catheter in the bifurcation and thrombolyze the patient. And we were lucky we could salvage this limb and the patient could go home with two intact limbs. This is a dissection that took place in the external iliac artery after angioplasty. But this is much, much easier to treat as long as your wire is across the lesion. All we need is to deploy a stent across the dissected segment and you have a beautiful vessel at the end of it. Instant stenosis is always be a problem. We could radiation therapy, cutting balloons. But once it happens, we know it continues to be a problem practically for life. So... This is another extremely important thing to know. Knowing when to stop is knowing or is as important as knowing how to do the procedure. Remember that it is not worth having major complications, ruptures and occlusions. Always remember it is better to stop when a surgeon can bail you out rather than stopping when there is no uh, way that anybody can help us at the end of the procedure. What I mean is uh, back off when you realize that things are not going well, when you spend 3-4 hours and still not able to cross an occluded segment.